Welcome to the Unstoppable CEO Podcast with Steve Gordon. Welcome to the Unstoppable CEO Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Gordon, and today I've got a really exciting interview for you. Um, I, I gotta tell you, I've been looking forward to this one for a number of weeks now, uh, ever since we got it scheduled. I'm talking today with Brock Blake. He's the CEO and founder of Lendio. They are the largest business lending marketplace in the U.S., and Brock is a big believer that access to capital should be simpler and quicker for entrepreneurs so that they can go out and do what they do best, which is innovate and grow. And he's built a successful business around solving that particular problem. He's got a great team that's driving really phenomenal results at Lendio. They've facilitated more than $1.7 billion in small business loans, which is a a number that just boggles the mind. And while all of that is really, really impressive, Brock and I have something else in common. We're both married and have four children. And he's got a lot to say about how to have a happy and successful family while you build a successful business. So we're going to touch on all of those things. Brock Blake, welcome to the Unstoppable CEO. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on, Stephen. Give us a little background. What got you to this stage of your career? How did you get to to the point where you're solving all of the the problems of access to capital for small businesses? Well, it's funny. I, I like to say, you know, we got here by making a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you you go and you you have an idea of what you want to accomplish, and you go and start something, and and you realize you try this and it doesn't work, and you pivot and you try that and it doesn't work, and and you, but you know, the key along the way is learning from it, um, um, and trying not to make the same mistake twice. I mean, uh, we, uh, at the core of what we are, have built is this passion for small business owners. I, I, uh, out of school, I won an entrepreneurial competition, won $50,000 and I could use that to go start any business that I wanted or go buy a business. So I went out and I started talking to business owners. Tell me about what's working and what's not working. What are your challenges and what are the things that keep you up at night? And consistently, I would hear from business owners that, yeah, I have this passion to grow this business, but I need money and I don't know where to get it. And I go to my bank and I get declined. And and um, and so I kept hearing that over and over and over again and just felt like there was a there there was an enormous opportunity to solve this problem of helping business owners get financing. And at first, we started a business that uh, was trying to connect the entrepreneur to an investor, an angel investor, a venture capitalist. And, and uh, we would do these speed dating sites. You go around table to table to table, pitching entrepreneur or pitching investors your business idea and hope that one of them would invest in your business. And as we, we had a lot of interest from business owners, but we realized that most businesses are not the next Facebook and Uber and, and Twitter and all these different things. They are main street businesses. They're restaurant owners and they're landscapers and, and dry cleaners and retail organizations. They don't need a half a million or a million dollars. They don't need an investor. They need 25 or 50 or a hundred thousand and they need a loan. So, you know, in 2011, we kind of shut down all that entrepreneur stuff, uh, connecting to investors, and really focused on this main street business owner, small business owners, connecting them to loans to get financing. Now we're eight years building that, and and you know, uh, I, I don't want to short circuit all the learnings, but you know, we're at almost two billion dollars of loans that have been funded on our platform, and really passionate about helping that business owner, what we call fuel their American dream. That's a that's an amazing story. Just to to think that all of this started out of a you know an entrepreneurial competition, and and you've evolved it and iterated it you know since then. But um, you know, and you're having a huge impact. And I, I would imagine that that wasn't all a foregone conclusion when you started. I mean, there had had to have been like every entrepreneur, unless you're the first. I joke some, sometimes on the podcast, I'm waiting for the first guest to come on, the first entrepreneur to come on and say, nope, I had the idea and then the rest was pretty easy. It's all been roses. So <laughs> unless you're that guy, um, what do you do when it's not all roses? How do, you, how do you stay unstoppable and persevere through it? Yeah, I mean, it is the exact opposite of all roses. Um, if you are uh, 
thinking that being an entrepreneur is all roses and man, it, then you're, you're going to be disappointed, I guess is the best word to, to describe it. But it is fulfilling. You know, being an entrepreneur and going and you have, have this idea and you have this dream and you have this goal and you start working on it and, and you know, you, you come across these challenges and you're like, oh man, I thought it was going to be this way and it ended up being that way. And there's times where you have, you know, I don't know how many near-death experiences we've had at Lendio. We've, we've run out of money. Um, we couldn't make payroll. We should have died probably five, six, eight times maybe along the way. You know, for me, I truly believe in this kind of one step in front of the other, fight every single day to live another day, and somehow you'll get through it. Um, because the journey of an entrepreneur includes the highest of highs, some moments that are just incredible where you're like, wow, look what we've built. Look at this accomplishment. Look at that deal we landed. Um, you know, and there's so much satisfaction, you know, in building this great team and culture. Uh, but it also includes the lowest of lows times where I literally was, uh, kind of in fetal position on the floor, like not sure I'm going to be able to get through these moments. And the, and the thing is, is you just have to enjoy the ride. You can't get too high. You can't get too low and just fight and persevere. And I, I really feel like maybe there are those entrepreneurs that are just brilliant and, and you know, this made to be an entrepreneur. Uh, but for the rest of us, you know, it's persistence. And, and uh, I think it's not just persistence, but that's a big part of what's got us to where we are today. Yeah, I think, I think persistence is kind of a key ingredient, but you've got to have, uh, you got to have some wits about you at the same time. I mean, you can persist and make a whole lot of bad decisions and I've seen that happen. And then that's generally not a very good or pleasant experience for the entrepreneur, but, you know, but combine persistence with, you know, with, with some smarts and some reasonably, you know, effective decision-making. And I think there, you know, there is the opportunity to, to adjust you know, and, and as you described it, you know, at, at the beginning where, you know, you had a different idea for how to fulfill, you knew what the need was that businesses needed access to capital, but your first attempt at trying to fulfill the need wasn't quite a match. And so I think, I think that's a great example of it right there is like you looked at the evidence and, and adjusted accordingly, you stayed persistent towards the goal, um, you know, and, and, but adjusted the the mechanism, um, you know. And I, I just I think that's a fantastic example of of what it takes, uh, you know, to to be ultimately successful in business. Yeah, I mean, as an entrepreneur, what you identify is you say there's a problem in the market. And I'm going to try and solve it, and naturally, that the solution to that problem is is starts off as a hypothesis. I believe that this solution or this idea will solve that problem. And then you have to get out and you have to test it and you have to, you know, and it might solve a piece of the problem, but not, you know, an entire problem. And, and, or you might have to, you know, okay, well, part of this is right, but part of it's wrong. And you have to tweak and adjust and, and fail a little bit and then get back and, 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 and learn some more and tweak and adjust and just keep working at it until you feel like you've got that product market fit where that cut you're nailing, you know, the customer problem and, and, you know, you've got happy customers and people that are willing to pay for your product or service. And, and then you start, then, then you get to the, you know, the scaling portion of it, which, which uh, is, is a challenge, a unique challenge in and of its own. Absolutely. Well, Brock, I want to take a quick break and I want to come back. And when we come back, I want to talk about the work that you're doing at Lendio and, and, and really talk about the, the importance of getting capital to, you know, to entrepreneurs, to small businesses and, and understand a little bit more about how you're solving that, that particular problem. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with more from Brock Blake. Hi, this is Steve. I hope you're enjoying this interview. We've got more to come in a minute, but what I'd love for you to do right now is rate this podcast. Leave us a review, rate us on iTunes. It'll really help others discover the podcast and help us help other CEOs, other business leaders become unstoppable. So if you go to unstoppableceo.net forward slash iTunes, you can find instructions there and links that will take you right to where you need to go to review the podcast. 
Thanks so much. Now back to the interview. Welcome back, everyone. This is Steve Gordon, and I'm speaking with Brock Blake, who's the CEO and founder of Lendio. And Brock, you described in the first part of the interview how you you perceived this problem with access to capital for entrepreneurs, and and you saw that it was a you know really too complex of a of a process for entrepreneurs to deal with. Sometimes they have trouble getting access, going to their banks, and some of the more traditional you know ways that they get capital. And uh, I'd love to kind of dive in a little bit and and understand the problem, uh, you know, as as you originally, you know, discovered it, and uh, and then learn a little bit more about how how you and how Lendio are are solving that problem. Yeah, so there are about thirty million small business owners in the U.S., um, and these business owners are really passionate and talented at what they do. Uh, as I talked about, it might be running a restaurant, or it might be They have a retail shop or a manufacturing or a design shop or other things like that. But they, and they're experts at that problem or product or service. But what they're not usually experts at is getting a loan from a bank. And they think, well, I've been banking with this bank for the last 10 years. So if anyone's going to give me a loan, it's going to be this bank. Uh, Unfortunately, every bank uh, offers different types of loan products to business owners. Uh, so it's kind of like, I like to say, it's like, it's like restaurants. There are lots of different types of genres of restaurants. You can get Chinese food and hamburgers and, and Italian food and, and Indian food and all these different things. With a bank, it's not a one size fits all. They don't offer every type of loan product out there. So you might go to your bank and apply for a loan and get declined, not because you're not credit worthy, but because you went to the wrong bank for the type of loan product you need. And once I understood that there, in business lending, there's 15 different types of loan products um, and different ways of underwriting. You could, you could get an equipment loan, leveraging equipment. You could get a commercial real estate loan, le- leveraging land or real estate. You can get an SBA loan with some other assets. You can get working capital loan, leveraging cash flow. You can get credit cards, leveraging, you know, your your personal credit score. And there's like all these different types of loan products, um, you know, accounts receivable and all these different things that open up so many options for business owners to get financing. Uh, So to just go, you know, to one bank and fill out this long application, get declined or go bank to bank to bank and try and do that is, is, is really uh, inefficient and, and a painful experience for the business owner. So what we've done is we went out and gathered 75 lenders on our platform, including Bank of America, uh, American Express, PNC Bank, On Deck Capital, Cabbage, across all these different loan products, and, and, and make it easy for that business owner to fill out one application, kind of like Expedia. You go to Expedia, you fill out where you want to go and for a hotel, and it pops you all these different hotel options, and you choose you know, based on what's the best fit for you. We do that same thing. We've got a marketplace to allow that business owner to go to one place, get at, get offers from several business owners and then ch- or several lenders, sorry, and then choose the offer that's the best fit for the business owner. It's free for that business owner. We make money from the lender who pays us uh, when that loan closes. Yeah. So really, you're bringing transparency to an industry that for a long time hasn't had it. I mean, bank to get kind of get transparency in banking is difficult because they've all got different ways that they approach loans, just as you described. And and it's very hard to compare one to another, but it sounds like you've been able to kind of bring all that together and, and not only give transparency to it, but simplify the whole process so that as an entrepreneur, I don't have to go to 10 different banks. And some of them I might not, you know, in the past, you were, you tended to be limited to who was in your local area. It sounds like that limitation has, has maybe gone away as well. That's, that's right. Yep. And, and we talk about delivering options, speed, trust. So options, there's that transparency, you know, I want to, I want to see what are the best options that I have available that I have to choose from speed, you know, business owners are busy. They're, they're, they're so wrapped up juggling so many different things. We want to make it simple and easy for them and trust that they that this is an experience that they can 
it's going to be a positive customer experience. It's one they can refer their friends to and their family members to, and, and, and that it's a white glove kind of customer experience. And, and so those are the things that we are really passionate about delivering to those business owners, the option, speed, and trust. Wow. So you, you originally started with the, you know, the concept in a different form. Um, you said, I think back in, in 2007, is that right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So at that time, I would imagine, you know, I mean, I just remembering what things were like back in 2007 through about 2012, it was pretty difficult to get any kind of business lending done uh, because of what was happening in the banking industry. Uh, have you seen that change over the last few years? Yeah, so it's interesting um, that you know during that time there were very few online lenders. Uh, the only during back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, you know two thousand nine when the crash happened, it was primarily banks that were offering loans, and uh, you know they're they're to get a loan you really needed you needed good credit, you needed good collateral, and you needed strong cash flow. You needed to check all three of those boxes. Uh, but when the crash happened in 2008, 2009, what happened is many of the banks retreated and stopped lending. Um, and uh, what that created was this funding gap. A lot of business owners that were good businesses, but that didn't have access to capital uh, from their bank. And that opened the door for what, these online or alternative lenders to come in and start offering loans. Um, and what was great about that is they started looking at underwriting in diff different ways. It wasn't just, I need, you know, all three of those strings. I need to check the box of credit, collateral, and cash flow. A lot of them were underwriting saying, you know, let's, I think we can, we, I think we can underwrite based off of two of those things. You know, if they have good cash flow and good credit, then let's, let's give them a loan. Or if they have good collateral or good credit, let's give them a loan. And even some of them now, you can get a loan based off of just one of those things. You know, your, your risk is your risk profile will increase, but at least you still have options. Whereas back in the day you didn't. So the market has changed quite a bit since about 10 years ago and only for the better for business owners. They have way more options than they've ever had. A lot more competition from lenders trying to get uh, more and more business customers to lend to. And, um, you know, it's a really, really great time for business owners to get, to get access to capital. Are you seeing, uh, because I would imagine you, you, as you see these applications come through the, you have to, I, I would guess, see trends in, um, both volume that, you know, the business owners are, are requesting and in, in the types of things maybe that they're looking to fund. Do you guys see any trends in, and how business owners are using capital uh, through your system? Yeah, um, no question. You know, obviously there's some things that are seasonal that we like to point out. You know, during this time of year, you have a lot of the outdoor construction, uh, servicing, landscaper, snow removal uh, that are that are that are either gearing up for the winter if it's you know if it's a winter type uh, business. Or, you know, they've just gone through the summer of landscaping. Now they're going to they're gonna refresh their equipment. Um, and so, you know, you start to see trends around this time of year are different. Or, or the last few months, it's been around inventory for retail shops. They're trying to look, look and raise money to, to prepare for the holiday season and this influx of, of revenue that comes in from, you know, the, the, the Christmas season and people buying gifts and things like that. And, so, you know, there's, there's, it's fun to be able to look across, you know, we have 90,000 transactions, nearly $2 billion of funding uh, on our platform across every state and every industry and every geography in the U.S. Um, and to, you know, we just put an announcement, announcement out there that some, for some reason, the South Atlantic states over the last six months has had a real rise in, in loan applications versus compared to some of the other regions. And, you know, we've started to kind of do some research. Why is that? And what's the reason, you know, what's driving that? And I, 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 get, I get geeked out about that data as we, the more and more we dive in and start looking at this and that and the trends. And, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a fun aspect of our business to see what's going on in the, the national economy. 
Yeah, I would imagine you get some insight that gives you some some idea of what what's going to happen before anybody else sees it. Uh, you, you know, you're seeing the demand for money kind of on the front end. I, I want to pivot for a second because you and I've talked before, and and uh, you shared with me your your passion for, I guess, talking about and being open about the challenges of you know being a husband, being a father, having a family as you know as you're growing. Uh, an entrepreneurial company, and you've had tremendous success growing your company over the last ten years or or, or more now. And you, at the same time, you've done that while balancing a, a, a large family. You've got four children. Uh, I do as well. I know. I know the kind of demands that that puts on your time. So, how, how have you m- made that all work, and what have you learned from it? Yeah. So, this is a subject that I just love, and and um, you know, I I wouldn't trade. Um, the relationship with my kids and wife for anything in the world, including a successful business. Um, you know, I, uh, it's, it was interesting early on in my career. Uh, we were, we were raising venture capital to grow the business and we had a term sheet from an investor and he came out to spend the day with us in our office. And we went to lunch and we started kind of having a personal conversation and, and it's important, you know, as you're looking to, to bring on an investor, this is going to be a partner you're going to work with for a long time and to get to know them. So as we were getting to know them, he said, you know, I was telling him about, you know, a couple of my, at the time, I think I had two kids and I was telling him about my son, Jackson and my oldest daughter, Ellie, and, and how much fun I, I, you know, how much I enjoy being with them and seeing them grow and, and he said, you know, well, talk to me about your priorities. Um, you know, is it uh, being a dad and, and a CEO? And, and I said, you know, I really want to be a great dad and a great CEO. And he said, he said something. He said, Brock, he's like, candidly, I don't think that's possible. Uh, I haven't seen that in my career. And I strongly believe that you can be a great CEO or a great dad, but you're not going to be both. One of them has to give. And at that moment in that lunch, I knew that he was not the right fit for me as a business partner because maybe he hadn't seen it and maybe it hasn't been done, but I was going to do everything in my power over my career to be a great dad and a great CEO. And that's kind of been my life's mission ever since. Um, and I'm not perfect at it and, and, and I've got a long ways to go and it's definitely aspirational for me. Um, but it is something that, uh, you know, I, I, I try and you have to give up other things, but I believe, and hopefully one day we'll, you know, be able to kind of say, you know what, maybe it wasn't great, but I did a pretty good job at kind of being a, being a, being a great dad and being a great CEO. Well, you know, as you've approached this, what are some of the, the key things you think that uh, entrepreneurs need to, need to be doing as they're trying to uh, approach the same you know, the same kind of fork in the road or, or a parent fork in the road culture tells us it's very difficult to do both. Uh, I'm with you. I, th- I think it can be achieved. And I'm just, I'm curious what you've learned uh, in the process as, as you've tried to walk that, that line. Yeah. So, um, you know, some things that I, you know, try to do that have been good for me, kind of these life hacks, you know, first thing is, is that to be incredibly disciplined on a schedule. Um, so for me, you know, it's, I, I wake up br- er, very early every morning, you know, I, on three to four times a week, I am, uh, exercising, uh, either in the gym or go play a uh, very, you know, competitive basketball or something that gets some cardio going for my sanity. It's important for me to get to get a workout in. I also take about 30 minutes in the morning to do personal, uh, study, like, uh, scripture study or some sort of meditation or uh, reading uh, also helps with sanity. Want to eat with uh, the family before as they're off to school and we're, you know we're kind of around the table. It's, it's not like a formal breakfast, but it's but it's you know it's 15 minutes uh, where we're 10-15 minutes where we're kind of before where everyone's off and for their things for the day. Uh, and then when I'm at the office, man, it is just it's on. It's game on from when I walk in the office until I leave. You know, I try not to wait like every and hopefully, you know, fortunately to a point now where I have a 
uh, executive admin that really helps with this, but like every minute of the day is, is, uh, you know, dedicated to, to being productive. And, uh, and, and so that, you know, I, when I go home, I have an opportunity to spend, you know, eat dinner with my, my family and, uh, attend, you know, what might be sports games or, you know, in the fall, I coach my son's football, you know, and then, and then if I need to, I'll, I'll get back online uh, later at night after they've been able to go to bed. You know, I think that, you know, Fridays for me are date night with my wife. And, and I, that's uh, really important to be able to can put the phone away and, and uh, go and enjoy some time with her. And, and, you know, I think it's, it's just be where your feet are. Right. Um, and I'm not, I, 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 this is something that you constantly battle with, but if I'm at home with my kids, try and put my phone away and be, t- you know, spend real time with them. And if I'm at the office, it's like, I am cranking and trying to be as effective as possible. And um, so it's, it's a work in progress, but there's just some things, you know, there's things around vacations or, you know, and, and uh, you know, for me, I, 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 it's important to get out and, and do family vacations and, and, you know, it doesn't matter if it's an hour away or it's a staycation or if it's, you know, a trip to Hawaii, but some time with them on a regular basis and some things like that. I could, this is, I could go on all day about this subject, but it's, um, those are a few things that have helped me to balance this craziness and it isn't perfect. You know, when I'm on vacation, I work and, and, um, uh, you know, and, and at home I, you know, lack of sleep sometimes, but try and do those things which will um, be sustainable and, and pr- give both, you know, the growing company and the family the time and attention they need. You know, I thank you for sharing all of that because I think it's important. I, I think the most important thing that you shared there is, is, and you said it several times, you said it's a work in progress. You know, I, I think so many people are, are out there saying, well, you got to do this morning routine or you got to, you know, schedule yourself this way. And there's some, as if there is some perfect way to do it. And I'm with you. I, you know, this is a, it's almost like a daily, I don't want to, I was going to say battle. I don't think that's the right word. It's because it's a, a, it's a positive thing. You know, you're really kind of choosing between two really great areas of life, but it's that constant sort of adjustment back to the right path, you know, maybe like kind of like you're navigating a plane or something. You're always kind of tweaking the the heading a little bit just to make sure you're, you know, you're heading in the right direction. So thank you for sharing that. I, the, the, the things that I picked up from that, and it's interesting because the, you and I are in sync on, on a number of things, um, you know, particularly with, you know, morning routine. I always make sure I've got time in the morning with, uh, you know, with the kids as they're off to school and with my wife as she's off to work. And then in the evenings, we always make it a point. We always have dinner together. I mean, it's very rare unless I'm traveling that we don't, but you know, the, I think that the, the thing that, that you shared that I I know I'm going to take away is really getting better about the calendar and making sure everything's in there and scheduled. Um, I'm probably a little too, uh, a little too loose with it, you know, and, and wing it a little bit right now. Um, but um, I think it's a fantastic piece of advice, you know, put it on the calendar and then be wherever your feet are. And uh, I appreciate you sharing all of that because I think everybody listening who has a family feels that struggle and they know it. And, um, and it's, it's nice to, to, you know, hear from somebody who's fighting the good fight and, and making some progress along the way as you clearly are. Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said before, you know, I'm not, I mean, it is a work in progress. Um, and, but the key there for me is just trying to be disciplined with it. You know, I, I like, I'm not a big believer in like diets and things like that because I, I don't like to do things that I can't sustain for a really long time. And, and, and so it's like, try and eat healthy or do those things that, you know, like over a really long time, you can keep it going. And that's not like, start it, stop it, start it, start, stop it. And so for each person, they're going to have their own different calendar and different schedule and things they can, they can sustain. But those are the things that have helped me to be able to, you know, not get burnt out at the office because that's a real struggle. You know, you spend so much time there and you've got all these challenges, you never turn it off. Like it's healthy to turn off the phone and like things can wait. Um, it's, it's, it's healthy to, 
make sure, you know, you get exercise in and get some meditation in and good sleep. And so it's, it is, you know, and I haven't always been this way early on in my career. I mean, I got very little sleep and I was always, you know, working and I, and I mean, it, it's part of the job of being a, an entrepreneur or a CEO. It, there's demand all the time. But um, I also think that you can, you know, it, for your sanity and for the long-term sustaining of it, you know, you have to figure out what can I, what's the discipline that I can build, the structure, the schedule, the process that, that allow me to be happy, healthy, and sustain this over a long period of time. Yeah, I think, I think that's so critical. I want to make sure we get people connected with you who, uh, who may be thinking that they want to learn more about what you're doing both at Lendio. And I know you're, you're beginning to, to talk more about um, your approach to, to family and entrepreneurship. So if, if somebody's listening to this and they go, hey, I'm growing like crazy and I need some cash to fund it, how do they get hooked up with Lendio and, and get into uh, you know, the process there to, to uh, potentially access some capital? Yeah, so lendio.com is where you can go, and and uh, again, it's a free service. There's no kind of uh, there's no payment or anything like that. We'll see what options we have. We we can't. I don't want it to come across that we can get every business owner financing. If there's, you know, there's challenges around, you know, really bad credit and no cash flow and no collateral. Man, that's that's a, a recipe. It's gonna be really challenging. But but it doesn't hurt to come in and 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 go through our, our process, our online application. We have a, f- a funding manager that we assign to each business owner to help answer their questions, talk them through the experience, see what we can do to help and guide them along the way. And so lendio.com is the place to, to go. And let's see if we can uh, help you out through your, through uh, getting you some financing. Very good. And, and, uh, I know as you do more and more thinking and, and, uh, publishing around the idea of, work and family and all of that. Is there a particular place where they, where folks can uh, connect with you and, and uh, follow what you share there? Yeah. So uh, I share a lot on Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is just Brock Blake uh, on Twitter. Um, that's probably the best way. Uh, if, you know, people want to reach out to me, they can do it through, through Twitter and, uh, or email me, you know, at Lendio, brock.blake at lendio.com uh, will reach me as well. Very good. Well, uh, folks, go check out Lendio if you have that need. Brock, thank you so much for uh, sharing some of your expertise with us. And we'll link to uh, your Twitter profile. We'll link to Lendio in the show notes for anybody that's uh, looking for those links. And uh, thanks again for investing a little time with me. Yeah, my pleasure, Steve. Appreciate you having me on. This episode of the Unstoppable CEO podcast is sponsored by the Unstoppable Agency. That is the agency part of our business where we work with professional service firms and create a done-for-you marketing program. And what that looks like is we actually sit down with you. We come together and define your ideal client with you. We go build a list of those people, and then we begin reaching out to them on your behalf to book them as guests on your podcast. We call it podcast prospecting, and it's a fantastic way to connect with potential clients and influencers that can refer you, and it's end-to-end a done-for-you system. And so if that's something that you think might be the right fit for your business, go to our website, go to unstoppableceo.net. You can uh, find there on the homepage a link to a video presentation that explains how it all works. And if you'd like, let's get together and have a quick 20 minute conversation and see if we're a fit. Again, that's at unstoppableceo.net right on the homepage. Look for a link to the video that explains how it all works.